Hello and welcome to SIPS Level 2 Certificate in Procurement and Supply Operations Revision Tips and this is for Module 3 Stakeholder Relationships. I'm going to cover Learning Outcome 1 which is to know the stakeholders in Procurement and Supply. So what are stakeholders? Stakeholders are individuals or businesses that are interested in what your organisation does. They will either be benefiting from what you do or be harmed by what you do. So let's have a look at the diagram on the slide. Organisations identify stakeholders to see who's involved in the supply chain and how their involvement will impact on the process. Work out who will influence the business and how it operates and who will be affected by the actions that the business take. It highlights any potential conflicts of interest and it ensures you're aware of the needs of the target stakeholders and how to engage with them. To, to define your stakeholders, consider anyone who is engaged in or affected by the business activities of your organisation. Think of the way the organisation operates and ask yourself the following questions. Where does procurement fit within it? What sort of suppliers are required? to make the products for cleaning, catering, stationery, insurance? Who buys those specific supplies? And where and how are supplies bought? Let's take a look at some typical external stakeholders. Your suppliers, they could be manufacturers, wholesalers, or companies that supply goods or services to your organization. Customers are the people who pay for your goods and services. Consumers are the end user of the product or service. They may or may not be your customer. Communities are typically the group of people who live near where your organization operates. The government are responsible for approving planning permissions and licenses. And other groups like trade and professional bodies like SIPs. So just to go back on customers and consumers, because I mentioned that the consumer is not always the customer and there is a clear distinction between them. Customers are people who pay for the goods or services. Consumers are the end user of the product, so they don't always pay for the goods or services. And that's because customers can be business to business who then pass on further down the supply chain. Or it could just be, you know, you going into a shop and purchasing an item bringing that home and somebody else consuming it. So let's have a think about whether or not the following are customers or consumers. An adult buying baby food. A teenager buying a magazine. A person buying a video game. A man in a supermarket shopping for his whole family. Parents buying a car for their child. A cafe buying coffee beans. Or a tier three supplier providing goods to a tier two supplier. The buyers and end users of organisations, products and services are the reasons why all tasks in the organisations are carried out. And organisations need to be ready to respond to those changes. So changes in purchasing practices such as people now doing online shopping rather than purchasing from high street stores, seasonal demand like ice cream or warm clothing, competition in the market, customers are looking for quality products at the right price and will switch to get a better deal. So we can now look at profiling stakeholders and what is profiling and why is it important? So organisations profile their stakeholders to gain a greater understanding of the elements such as their age, gender, location, marital status, education level, nationality, their values, interests, lifestyles, attitudes and aspirations. This provides an insight into the influence that stakeholders might have on a business. 
can help to make an organisation see the changes that are needed and allows time for responses when working with stakeholders who may be slow to act. It helps identify the best way to share the benefits and failures of products and services and enables you to account for stakeholders' needs in the strategy. And to know what stakeholders' needs, wishes and priorities are. To help you see the market from a stakeholder's point of view, which gives a fresh perspective on your approach. Now, the information you obtain from each of those stakeholders is what they need from you, how they'll be impacted by your organisation's plans, their level of interest in the organisation or other stakeholders, and the influence they have. And finally, the risks and benefits of their involvement. So far, we've looked at external stakeholders, but you also need to consider the internal stakeholders of an organisation. So let's go through some of these in detail. So marketing, they're responsible for promoting your organisation's products and services to your customers. Sales, responsible for responding to customers' requests and creating orders for goods and services produced by the business. Production, they manufacture or assemble the products. Operations are involved in strategic and day-to-day -day matters and responsible for ensuring compliance with regulations like health and safety. Human resources collaborate with other departments to ensure they have the correct number of staff with the right skill set. Finance, part of their function is to interact with suppliers who need to be paid, which is also known as credit control. Design and development, they engage with customers to determine needs, redesign products and design new products. Distribution, responsible for getting goods and services to the right place at the right time. That's both internally and externally. Facilities, they ensure the buildings and services meet the requirements of the people who work there. Senior managers, responsible for day-to-day -day running of the business and have an oversight of all the business functions. The board of managers are responsible for the governance and strategic direction of the business. And finally, shareholders, who want the business to make profits so they see a return on their investment. Procurement and supply interact with all of the business functions in some way, whether they're a dedicated team for that function or if several functions are handled by one team or person, as can happen in smaller organisations. So let's look at the sorts of things we buy. So marketing, they purchase marketing materials like brochures and leaflets, display stands, promotional gifts. And they supply their internal customers with graphic designers and search engine optimization experts. Sales will purchase company cars and mobile phones and laptops. And they'll supply samples and quotes and sales literature. Production, purchase raw materials and components and supply finished goods. Operations, purchase tools and equipment and outsource staffing to supply their staff and other parts of the business. Human resources, purchase agency staff and training providers and also staff handbooks. Finance, purchase accounting and payroll software External specialists like auditors and they supply pay slips to their employees. Design and development. They purchase raw materials and components and external experts to supply prototypes and market research. Distribution purchase company vehicles and uniforms and personal protective equipment to supply goods and logistic services to both internal and external customers. Facilities purchase cleaning consumables and tools for cleaning and maintaining their external contractors. They supply these cleaning services and security. Senior managers purchase external consultants, travel and accommodation to supply organisational governance, project goals, aims, objectives, 
and leadership. And the Board of Managers purchase accountants and auditors and even solicitors to supply company annual and interim reports. Thanks for watching.